prom night. Everything is all right. Prom night. No more feeling uptight. I'm doing a movie review, and if you couldn't tell from that cringeworthy opening, the movie I want to review is Prom Night. Now, Prom Night is a Canadian slasher film released in 1980, and this came out at the beginning of what a lot of people call the early 80s slasher boom that was started by movies like Halloween, even though that was late 70s, and especially Friday the 13th. Although in this movie's case, I believe this was actually shot before Friday the 13th, so obviously this film's more so capitalizing on the success of Halloween rather than Friday the 13th, especially considering that Jamie Lee Curtis is in this movie. Now, the film was directed by Paul Lynch, who mainly did a lot of work in television. He directed episodes of Murder, She Wrote, The 80s Twilight Zone, Star Trek The Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Xena Warrior Princess, So Weird, and Sliders. And the film was written by William Gray from a story by Robert Guza Jr., whose name I'm no doubt butchering. And the film was produced by Peter R. Simpson. Now, while Prom Night never became quite as well known as the aforementioned Friday the 13th and Halloween, it has developed a huge cult following, and to this day it's considered by a lot of slasher fans to be one of the better films from this time period. Now, Prom Night is a movie that I used to like a lot more when I was younger. A few years ago I did a video of my favorite horror films from the 1980s, and I think I did talk about this movie in that video, but to be honest, if I were to redo that video, I don't know if I would include this movie on that list again, because after re-watching it in preparation for this review, it's an alright movie, but I would not rank this as one of the best slasher films from this time period. Like, if I wanted to watch one of the lesser-known slasher films from this time, I would much rather watch something like My Bloody Valentine or The Burning. Now, what's interesting is they were originally going for a PG rating with this movie, but the producers were like, nobody's going to see a PG-rated slasher film, so they gave them more money to reshoot some scenes and make it a little bit gorier. And you can kind of tell watching the movie that they were initially going for something a little bit tamer because it actually is a fairly slow-paced film and the actual killings don't really happen till very late in the movie, which I did appreciate to a certain extent. And the film actually does have sort of a made-for-TV quality to it, but that could also be because the DVD that I have here is a pretty crappy transfer because I think at a certain point the film became public domain, so as a result, the movie's available on a lot of these crappier DVDs, but I know a few years ago there was a special edition Blu-ray of the film. But yeah, Prom Night is a movie that I like, but it's a film that I definitely used to like a lot more when I was younger. Now, the plot of Prom Night is it begins in the early 70s, and we follow a group of 11-year-old kids who are messing around in this, like, abandoned hospital or asylum, and they're playing in this game where they're all pretending to be killers. And this little girl who's slightly younger tries to see what they're doing and kind of tries to join in the game, but they're teasing her and scaring her and they cause her to back up against this window and basically they accidentally push her out the window, killing her. And one of these kids convinces the others not to tell anybody about this, so they get out of there, but it turns out that somebody witnessed what they did. And a local sex offender who suffers from schizophrenia is accused of this girl's murder. We jump ahead the six years later and we follow the brother and sister of the little girl who was killed, Kim and Alex, who are now seniors in high school. We also follow the kids who actually killed this girl, who are also now high school seniors. But now it's the night of their senior prom and these kids who were involved in this little girl's death are getting these harassing phone calls and it appears 
suggests that whoever's calling them is the one who witnessed what they did. Meanwhile, the man who is accused of this murder has escaped from the psychiatric hospital. Now, Prom Night, like a lot of slasher films from this time, almost acts as a whodunit where you don't know who the killer is till the very end of the movie. Like in the film, you have this sex offender who's also a paranoid schizophrenic who was accused of the crime and was even disfigured after getting into a car crash after being chased by the police, and he's sent away to a psychiatric hospital and escapes, and even though we as the audience realize that he didn't actually kill this little girl, perhaps he did witness it, and maybe he's the one going after these kids. But in the movie, there's also this creepy janitor who works at the school, and the movie almost tries to make you think that maybe he's the killer. There's also this creep who's constantly harassing Kim, and there are certain points where you start to think, okay, maybe he's the one who's stalking these kids. Now, I'm not going to give away who the killer actually is. From a lot of reviews I've seen of this movie, a lot of people say they've seen it come in a mile away. It's hard to say in my case, because I actually knew who the killer was going to be going into the film, because the film was talked about in a documentary I saw, where they outright mentioned who the killer was, but that's also what got me interested in checking the movie out. Now, in the film, Jamie Lee Curtis plays the character of Kim Hammond, who is ostensibly the protagonist of the film, and she's a pretty likable character, but I think that's more so owed to Curtis's performance rather than the writing itself. And Jamie Lee Curtis does do a really good job in this movie, but she's also a great actress. I actually met Jamie Lee Curtis several years ago. It was at a book signing. She wrote a children's book, and I still have it somewhere. Maybe I'll review it one day. The film also stars Leslie Nielsen as Kim and Alex's father, who is the principal of the school, and at the time, he was probably the biggest name in this movie, because Jamie Lee Curtis wasn't really a big name at the time this movie came out. Now, this was before Leslie Nielsen would become really well-known as a comedic actor, because a lot of people forget, before Airplane, he was much more well-known as a dramatic actor, but even so, it's actually kind of surreal seeing somebody like Leslie Nielsen in this low-budget slasher film. You have Michael Tuff as Alex, Kim's brother. You also have Anne-Marie Martin, credited as Eddie Benton, as the character of Wendy, who, throughout most of the film, is Kim's rival, and is also one of the kids who is involved in the death of her sister. Which makes her an especially unlikable character, because she's constantly harassing Kim, because Kim's dating her ex-boyfriend. Meanwhile... You killed her freaking sister, you goddamn bitch. The least you could do is give her your ex-boyfriend. Now, the actress Anne-Marie Martin was actually married to Michael Crichton, the same Michael Crichton who wrote Jurassic Park and Westworld. You have Casey Stevens as the character of Nick, who is Kim's boyfriend and Wendy's ex-boyfriend, and he's also one of the kids who was involved in the death of Kim's sister. And he's the only one who at least visibly seems to feel any guilt over this. And he does actually try to tell Kim the truth at one point. You also have Brock Simpson, who is the son of the producer Peter Simpson, as the 11-year-old Nick in the opening scene of the movie. Now, the main reason I'm bringing this kid up is he would actually show up in all of the Prom Night sequels. You also have Mary Beth Rubens and Joy Thompson as Kelly and Jude, the other two kids who were involved in the death of Kim and Alex's sister. You also have Jeff Wincott, who would later become best known for his martial arts career as Drew, Kelly's boyfriend. But yeah, Prom Night, it's not a great movie, but it's a decent little slasher film. I do enjoy it for the most part. I just don't think I can count this as one of my favorite slasher films from the early 80s. But if you are a fan of the early 80s slasher film, then you should check this out at least once.
And it is one of those movies where I understand why people love it, and I also understand why people hate it. I still recommend it, it's just that I used to like it more when I was younger. Now, if you're a disco fan, you might appreciate the soundtrack for the movie, because the film has a lot of disco music on the soundtrack, like that Prom Night song I was butchering in the beginning of this video. Now, Prom Night would go on to spawn three sequels, which are really just in-name-only sequels. Like, the only real connection that they have to the first film is, apparently they're supposed to be set at the same high school. But basically, the Prom Night series is an anthology series where each film is a different story just set at the same high school. But even that kind of falls under some scrutiny, because... Even though they're supposed to be the same high school, each film is clearly shot at a different school. And there was also a remake of this in 2008, which again was really just a remake in name only. Other than the name, it had little or no connection to the first movie. This movie was also referenced in the first Scream movie, I think by the character of Randy, one of the most overrated horror movie characters ever. Sorry to anybody who's a Scream fan, but... I'm not a fan of the Scream movies, and I'm not a fan of that character. Now, before I end this video, I want to cut to my friend John giving his thoughts on the original Prom Night. Hello everyone, Christian asked my thoughts and opinions about the original Prom Night movie from 1980. While this is a horror movie that I don't hate or love, it's an okay movie. This is a horror movie I rarely watch on rare occasions. I think this might be my second time rewatching. I'm not really sure how many other times I've seen it since then. The movie feels like it was directed by a high school or college student. I do understand this movie has a big cult following in the slasher horror community. Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie, it's like she was doing a poor man's Halloween ripoffs around this time period along with Terra Train. I love Jamie Lee Curtis. She's one of my favorite actresses in Scream Queens. This was also around the time before she really made it big as an actress and would have a great career in doing films like... Trading Places, A Fish Called Wanda, True Lies. The opening scene when the kids accidentally killed the little girl. That was horrible and crazy, the way they were bullying her so harshly. Rewatching this film recently, I don't remember Leslie Nielsen in this movie. It surprised me to see him in a low-budget horror movie, especially how this came out the same year as Airplane, when he went in comedy around this time in the 80s. Because previously, he was a very well-known serious like, character actor. The characters are cliche, you know he's going to live and die, there's really nothing interesting to say about him. And I'll admit, there's really not much else I have to say about this film, other than the fact that it's just another Halloween cliche slasher ripoff. The phone call scenes reminded me of Black Christmas and Mario Bava's Black Sabbath. The dance sequence made me think about Saturday Night Fever, which I'll admit, I never really seen that film. Rob Garrison, who played Johnny's friend, the Karate Kid, in Cobra Kai TV series, was also in this. I didn't even notice or recognize him. I hope you enjoyed John's take on this movie, but that was my review on Prom Night, and my next movie review will be on Hello Mary Lou Prom Night 2.